Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Here's a problem I've been discussing with my students in class this week, and there's a point to come out of this. It's a modified problem. So say I've got a five-sided die labeled one to five, and this die is thrown four times. What's the chance that the scores are in ascending order? then the probability will be equal to the total number of ways that I can get 4 through 4 in ascending order divided by total number of possible ways of number of possible ways of, of outcomes of um, throwing uh, 5 decided die 4 times okay makes more sense if I start writing things down total number of ways using FTC fundamental theorem of counting is equal to well each number of times I have five outcomes and you're doing it four times so it's five times five times five times five five to the power of four is the total number of ways irrespective of not they're in ascending order Next, and this is the thing, we have to count the number of ways where the outcomes in, in a, where the scores are in ascending order uh, and there are four draws from four throws. Let's list them. And listing them is the typical method I've seen in students' home. Alright, so here's the list. And you can see in each case numbers are in ascending order, and there are four numbers corresponding to outcome of each throw. One from first throw, two from second throw, three from first throw, four from third throw, and so on. So there are one, two, three, four, five outcomes. So my answer to the question of the probability that the scores are in strictly ascending order when I throw this die uh, four times is five over five to the power of four. Okay, point to come out from classes, is there another way of doing it apart from listing? I got some answers like this. From 5, choose 1. Which gives us 5. Now is this coincidental? Um, when the students did this, I'm sure one or two knew what they were doing. But on the whole, if they did this, I'm not sure whether they did understand what they're doing. Now, the question that arises when we use this, recall that when we use the combination, that order doesn't matter. So one student asked in class, but the question says that order matters. So why are you using combination instead of permutation? Now, this is what I'm going to try and explain now. I have to talk very slowly, because uh, otherwise I might get something wrong although talking slowly makes the whole thing more boring so bear with me okay so looking at this sequence uh, these sequences here we can think of it like this since the numbers have to be in order look if I and we're only drawing four numbers if I take say f if five doesn't appear then how many ways of the outcomes to, to the numbers which are smaller than five only one because you can't jiggle these any other way around because if you touch them at all they're going to be out of sequence so in other words when we take five out there is only one possible way of rearranging the other numbers so that they're in ascending order so taking five out is the same as saying there's only one way of those numbers being in ascending order and that one three four then matches one uh, so one two three four matches the one two three four Let's go down here. Let's say we four doesn't appear. Then we have the sequence one three five one two three five. Now, if four's gone, can you rearrange these any other way so that they're in ascending order? The answer is no. You can't touch them. If you touch them, they're going to be lose their order sequence order. So taking four out is the same as saying that you have must have the sequence one two three four five. 
let's do the same with 3. If 3 doesn't appear, then my numbers 1, 2, 4, 5. And there's only one way that that can happen. Chickle them the other way around. It will not be in order. And then 2. 2 doesn't appear. There's only one way, again, that this can appear matching this one for them to be in order. So you can see that what's happening is that uh, this one is equivalent to there's only w when five for each number that falls out there's only one sequence such that they're in order. So saying that these are the outcomes is same as saying for this one that five doesn't appear. This one is saying that four doesn't appear. This one is same as saying that three doesn't appear. This one's same as saying two doesn't appear. This one's saying that one doesn't appear. And for each one of these that do not appear, there is only one order. But does the order of whether you have five coming out, not appearing, four, three, two, one, whether the order of these things not appearing matter? The answer is no. It doesn't matter whether you get this one first, followed by that sequence, followed by that sequence, or going backwards or any other way. So in other words, the appearance of these sequences of these numbers, it doesn't matter, the order doesn't matter. So hence, uh, and and from these we're kind of choosing one, so hence that's why you've got five choose one. Now that's quite a nice problem, uh, I don't know whether I explained that very well, but so long as you can see that the combination here is to do with, if we look at it in terms of combination, it's to do with numbers that are omitted, and um, now the order of those do not matter.